Hey everyone, welcome to the NRL Round 24 Try Scorer Preview and Predictions video. This weekend we have 12 selections and we're going to be betting into all bar one game being the Bulldogs Dolphins. And I'm going to go through and explain why I think each one of these players is going to score a try using the bet finder tools, which one of which you can see on the screen here, where we go through and analyze where each team scores their tries and where their opposition for that game. And in this case, the Storm for the Panthers concede their tries. And we're looking for situations where we have a strong attacking situation and a weak defensive situation. Like firstly, for example, with the Panthers, strong situation on the left wing, they're the second best in the league, and the Storm are ranked 14th defensively for that position. So this is one of the tools that we're using. Then we can also use the rankings, both in attack and defense, to compare this to where their opposition stacks up against the overall league in terms of their recent opponents. So you can use these tools, which I'll put the link in the description to go through, because it's really good to see, for example, you might have noticed a player has been scoring a lot of tries recently, or they haven't been scoring, and you can go through and see that they play left center, and they've been going up against uh, teams that are very good at defending that position, or they've been going up against the poor sides. For example, a left center could have been going up against the Rabbitohs, Warriors, Raiders, and Eels, for example, over the past four weeks. Now they're facing the Roosters, who are the best team at defending that position. And it's definitely a much harder matchup than they've been facing. So their recent form isn't as good as it perhaps looks on paper. So you can use the rankings for that. And then we match it all up with uh, the player, their own trend throughout the season. So every single player and we go who's lining up for their game and then every game this season, how many tries they've scored. Uh, and also you can go through the average three weeks, six week, how many percentage of games where they score one try, two try and three tries. So they're the tools that we're using. Uh, last week we had 12 selections. Uh, we started the round really, really good. Uh, we were we hit six of our first seven uh, through to Saturday night and just missed uh, the selection in the Sharks game. We had Will Kennedy paying $2.80 to score a try for the Sharks against the Titans. And um, I went to that game and where I was sitting was like right near uh, where Kennedy went over. And as he was about to ground the ball, it got stripped away. So we we're really, really close to hitting the first seven. And uh, this will be now the fifth week of posting this as just something that uh, people who are following along the general videos I post talking about the games in general, who I think is going to win, what I'm considering betting. People ask for information on try scorers. So that's why I started this. And of the four weeks we posted, uh, three have been very profitable. How you want to stake the selections, and this is really, really important for long-term profitability, back each try scorer selection to win the same amount of money. So Divide your amount of money, create a 100 unit bankroll, and then back each selection to win a one unit or one and a half units if you're betting with a slightly smaller bankroll. And that's how I recommend you do it because some selections, you know, are $1.50, $1.60, other selections are $2.80, and you don't want to be averaging the same amount on each one. You want to risk more um, and outlay more on the selections that are slightly shorter and outlay less on the selections that are longer, unless it's a selection uh, that I'm really, really confident on. Uh, that's the recommended way, just in general, I recommend that you stay try scorer selections uh, to be profitable and make money every NRL season. Alrighty then, uh, let's get started. The first game on Thursday night, Penrith take on the Melbourne Storm. Uh, this is a really, really good game. You got the two top teams going against each other. They met back in round one and it was an eight nil scoreline to the Melbourne Storm. So, a really, really low scoring game, which isn't ideal for try scorers, but I do have two selections in this game. Well, firstly, look at the Penrith Panthers. Key error we, we want to target here is the wingers. So for the Panthers, they score the fifth most tries in the league through the wingers. And this is where the Storm concede the majority of their tries. You see they're ranked 10th to the right wing and 14th to the left wing. We know if we look at the team lineups, for the Penrith Panthers, we have Taruva on the left wing playing as number two, and then Brian Toho on the right wing for uh, the Penrith Panthers. If we look at them overall on the season, Taruva scored 14 tries, averages a try 
uh, in 44% of games, and then Toho averages a try in 41% of games. Uh, when I was looking at which way I wanted to go, because I didn't really want to back both of them, I don't want to have you know three selections because there is one that I like for the Melbourne Storm. I didn't want to have three selections in this game. And for that reason, I decided, looked at which way I wanted to go. And the way I did that is just looking at their form against the Melbourne Storm. And uh, for Brian Toho, he has scored uh, six tries in his past four games against Melbourne, whereas Taruv has only scored one try in his past five games against the Storm. So Toho has the way better record, and for that reason, I'm going to go with him. So at points bet, uh, they're paying $1.80 for Toho to score a try. Then the next selection in this game, I'm going to leave out Taruva, but he's definitely um, another really good option to target. For the Melbourne Storm, um, they're obviously a good attacking side across the park, but Penrith are the number one defensive side. However, one area where they are weak is defending the left wing. When we look at the lineups for the left wing for the Melbourne Storm, we have Grant Anderson. And generally, only pays $1.50, $1.60 to score a try, but because... Uh, the Storm are playing good defensive side. We're getting a better price this week. If we look at his uh, recent form, so Anderson missed the first you know, nine games of the season, but has scored a try in his past five games and scored a try in 50% of games this season. Over on Neds, uh, they're paying $2.35 for Anderson to score a try. So those are the two selections for the Panthers' Storm game. On to the Seagulls Warriors game. So this is the first of two games on Friday night, and both the Seagulls and then the Sydney Roosters are massive favorites. They're well into double digits favorites. In this situation, I pretty much only want to target the side that is big favorites, as they're the ones more likely to score tries. And it's slightly more risky, especially finding good situations for those underdog sides uh, when there's Teams expected to win and dominate the matchups. For the Seagulls, there's two plays that I want to go with. Firstly, at fullback, they scored the third most tries in the league through this position. And the Warriors are the second worst defensive team at fullback. And Tom Trebojevic plays uh, fullback for uh, the Manly Seagulls. And he's paying $1.60 to score a try against the Warriors. Overall, this season, uh, Tom Trebojevic has scored a try in three of his past four games. And overall, this season, the games he's played, he scored a try in 60% of them. Also playing against the Warriors, he scored four tries in his past four games. Uh, two of those were doubles. So he scored two tries in two of the four games and should be able to cross here uh, with an important game for the Seagulls for them to stay in touch with the top four. And the other selection that we're looking at in this game is a little bit of a tricky one. But when we look at how the Warriors defend, all the tries they concede are pretty much through the back line, uh, aside from the halves, but they don't really give up tries to the front row, second row, or interchange. So we really need to just target um, the back line for, and pretty much the back five for Manly. And when I was looking at the odds for these selections, because obviously we're not just looking for, you know, which players are going to score a try. We want to, you know, justify the price. Like, like I mentioned in last week's video uh, with the Titans players, they had really short prices because the Titans were favorites against Cronulla and uh, they're expected to win well and Titans scored the majority of tries through their wingers. However, the Sharks defend those positions really, really well and they're putting up very short prices for those Titans players. So it's just very easy to stay away in that situation. So always you know, determining what price we're willing to take as well. Looking through this though and looking through the try score trends uh, for the Seagulls, you can see the three players that are around Trebojevic at the top, all in the back line. We have Tommy Talao, Jason Saab, Lehi Hopawati. Uh, 15, 12, and five tries between them. Um, but they all score a try in at least 50% of games. So how I'm going to play this, because when I look through, uh, Jason Saab has an extremely good record against the Warriors. He scored seven tries in his past three and has scored uh, a try in his past four games against the Warriors. So he... Forms really, really well against them. And then obviously Hopawate and Talao, both in really good form, scoring trying three and four of their past matches. 
What I'm going to take for the second selection in this game is Jason Saab, Lehigh Hopawate, or Tommy Talao to combine for two plus tries. So uh, make sure you choose a selection that is combined. It's on Ned's, Ladbrokes, or Sportsbet. But we want to go combine. There is also the selection where you can have either one of these players to score two plus tries. You're going to get better odds for that. However, in this selection, we could have Saab to score and Talao to score, and Hopawati doesn't score, but they... Two players score one try and this bet would win. However, with the other selection, we'd need one of these three to score two tries in order to win, which obviously could happen as well and would win this bet as well if that did eventuate. However, I feel like this is just a slightly safer option and definitely should be hitting here uh, for the Seagulls against the Warriors because based on where they score the points and where the Warriors concede them, this situation sets up really nicely. It's slightly short. Personally, I don't take anything under $1.40 for a try score, but this one... Um, at $1.44, I'm okay with it. It's paying $1.30, I'm pretty sure, at Sportsbet. So alone, we're getting uh, somewhat um, significantly better value. And with try scores, you really want to shop around and uh, make sure you're securing the best prices. When I show you the plays, I'm comparing them across four different companies just for this video. Um, but definitely shop around because you can get much, much better prices by doing that. And there's another one coming up uh, later on, which um, I'll talk about as well. Uh, so those are the two plays, Tom Tabrovich to score $1.60 on the TAB, and then Saab to allow Hapoade to combine for two plus tries at Neds. On to the Roosters versus Eels game, the later game, as I said, another team that are big favorites. Uh, the Eels cannot defend the left edge whatsoever, and their right edge isn't really much better. So once again, we need to be targeting uh, the back or the centers and wingers pretty much for the Roosters. And there's a ton of different ways that you can go with these selections honestly there's not a great deal of value kind of similar to the seagulls warriors games when teams are big favorites like they're expected to put up 30 to 40 points you're not going to get like massive odds you know for any try scores but there is two that i like in this game that i will be playing first selection for the roosters we're going joseph swahaliki to score a try he's paying two dollars 40 on the tab to cross for a try. He scored a try in his past two games and against the Eels, he scored six tries across his past four games. If we bring up his record overall on the season, uh, we can see here listed here. Um, he has scored four tries so far this season and scored a try in 27% off games, but does get a really good matchup. He's in good form scoring twice in his past two games. Bruce is coming up to buy. Um, should make a mess of the Eels and um, Parramatta, like a bit of a heartbreaking loss last week against the Panthers. They concede a lot of points and uh, Roosters will know to not take them lightly because they beat the Warriors and then really pushed the Panthers last week. So don't expect the Roosters to come out, um, you know, just going through the motions here. I think they'll come out uh, looking to win. And $2.40 for him to score a try, especially with his record against Parramatta, like six tries in four games. And he scored a double in three of those four games uh, is a really good record to be bringing into this. Um, has also scored a try in three of his past four. If you go back to um, before he was out suspended, even though he missed a lot of games the second half of the season when playing, uh, has been really good. And then the other selection that I want to go with, as I mentioned, we're targeting the back five is looking at the wingers. The Eels can see the second most tries to wingers in the league. Roosters score the second most. So on the wings, we have Daniel Tupo and uh, Dominic Young for the Roosters. And I'm going to play them to combine for two plus tries. So another one of these combination markets, Tupo, Young, $1.64 to have two plus tries combined. Overall, this season, uh, these both these players um, have been racking up the tries, 15 and 14, respectively. And for a lot of the games this year, they've combined for at least two tries. Uh, Dominic Young has scored a try in six of his last seven starts. And then Tupo scored a try in uh, four of his last five starts for himself. But both have very, very high uh, one plus try percentage rates. And think both, if not one of these players, will be crossing for a double. So happy to play it there against the Eels. And we've seen many times this year those wingers uh, are able to rack up tries against them. On to Saturday, the Bulldogs Dolphins game. As I mentioned, this is the one that I'm going to stay out of. 
I did look closely at the centers for the Bulldogs. You'll notice they're ranked third in the league compared to the Dolphins, 10th defensively. However, for Chara Pride and to score a try for the Bulldogs is only paying a dollar forty-eight as they're the uh, listed centers. And I do expect, you know, at least one of them to cross, but didn't want to play one over the other. And as neither of them are super consistent with scoring tries. And, you know, at $1.48 for either one to score for that bet, I was looking for $1.75. So, you know, it's nearly half what I was hoping to be able to take the bet as. And in that situation, as the person who gets to decide, like we all are, whether we want to make a bet or not, like if we don't like the odds or not, we can just decide not to bet. We don't have to force it into that game just because the betting company says, you know, this is the price that's available. It doesn't mean we have to take it. We can kind of just wait for better opportunities. And that's what I think we should do here at that price. If obviously, you know, the game's not for a few days. So by then, if the odds change and it drifts out a little bit, may become a bet. But yeah, I need $1.75 to take it. And then... Uh, for the Dolphins, um, going up against this Bulldogs defense is rarely many good opportunities because the Bulldogs are such a good defensive side. And where they score their tries is uh, where they concede a lot of their tries through the second row and interchange. And interchange is probably the key area to target. Uh, but obviously at this stage of the week, final teams aren't out. And for the most part, generally don't love playing interchange players as try scorers. So for those reasons, that's why I just left that game alone from a try scorer perspective. On to the Cowboys versus Raiders game. We have two plays in this matchup. Uh, as we can see here, the Raiders can see the majority of their tries through centers, ranked 16th in the league. Cowboys ranked sixth in that position. Looking at their centers for this weekend's games, uh, you have Valentine Holmes and Billy Army Bailia. So we want to look at how those players have been performing overall this season. Uh, Valentine Holmes here did go through a really good run earlier on in the season. And so far overall is averaging a try in 42% of games. And even though his recent form hasn't been that great, um, can feel confident just because uh, the Raiders defense is so bad against centers that he should be able to cross in this matchup. Over on Ned or Labrokes, we can get Valentine Holmes to score a try at $2.25 uh, with tries in two of his last three against the Raiders as well. Uh, I expect he goes close to scoring a try in what is a pretty important game for the Cowboys to make sure they win. And then over on the Raiders side of things, uh, there is one player I want to target for a try scorer that we were able to hit last week as well. If you notice, the Cowboys' left edge defense is significantly better than their right edge defense. For the Raiders in attack, their right edge is slightly better than their left edge. So obviously, we they should be, you know, if they've done any homework, be targeting the right edge of the Cowboys. So looking at uh, the Raiders' right edge for this game, uh, they play uh, the wingers on the opposite side. So Xavier Savage playing right wing is the way that I want to target this game. And over on Ned, he's paying $1.94 to score a try. We look at him overall on the season. Come back over here. So Xavier Savage um, scored 11 tries, scores a try in 55% of games. And with a good matchup here as well, you know, if we're getting anything close to even money, then it's definitely worthwhile making the bet. Uh, he scored a try in his last game against the Cowboys as well. So uh, well set up. That was back in round 15, um, which you can see listed here. Uh, Valentine Holmes also scored a try in that game. We're definitely hoping for a bit of a repeat from what happened last time, but we're going Holmes and Savage to score tries, 225 and $1.94. Final game on Saturday, the Tigers versus Rabbitohs. Rabbitohs, smallish favorites for this game. As I mentioned in the preview, I think the Tigers are somewhat of a chance. However, there's nothing I really want to target here for the Tigers from a try scorer perspective. You could potentially look at the front row. And the Tigers have been scoring more recently. But the only issue you have with the Tigers is where the tries come from is very, very inconsistent. It's hard to like, and there's sometimes the case with these uh less quality sides, like they're not as consistent with, you know, their plays, where they target in the field, which makes it more difficult to predict. 
So for those reasons, I'm staying out of the Tigers. However, with the Rabbitohs, there's two players that I want to go with. I did look at combining these players as either one to score a try, but it was just paying too short for me to do that. So I'm going to play them individually. They're both paying $2.20 or greater. But I think at least one, if not both of these players, are a high chance of crossing the line for a try. Firstly, at fullback, the Rabbitohs score the fifth most tries through this position. Tigers concede the third most, ranked 15th in the league. Playing fullback for the Rabbitohs this week is Jai Gray. Overall this season, he scored four tries, but scored a try in 44% of matches. Obviously playing uh, backup to Latrell Mitchell in this position. Has scored a try in four of his past six games. He also crossed for a try in round 20 when the Rabbitohs played the Tigers. And I think he's a really high chance of scoring a try in this game. On Sportsbet, uh, they're offering $2.20 for Gray to score a try. Then the other selection in this game, if we go down to the halves, this is where the Tigers can see the most tries in the league. Rabbitohs ranked fifth to this position. So we have Jack Wyden and Cody Walker playing halfback and 5'8". Cody Walker in good try scoring form. He scored four tries across his past five starts and averages a try in 28% of games. There's a bit of discrepancy with the odds across a few different betting companies for this selection, you know, ranging anywhere from about $2.10, $2.20, up to the $2.75 that's being offered with uh, TAB for Cody Walker to score a try. He has also scored uh, five tries in his past five games against the Tigers. I missed a try in two of those games, but has scored double twice. And I think he's... A, at close to that $3 mark, uh, definitely worthwhile betting in this game. So those are the two selections for the Tigers. Rabbitohs, then we have two more to go. Firstly, in the Dragons-Titans game on Sunday afternoon. At fullback for the Dragons, they rank sixth in the league. And this is where the Titans concede the most tries in the competition. Playing fullback for the Dragons is Terrell Sloan, uh, as we can see here. Looking at his season record, you see he started the season really well. And this three-try performance actually came against the Gold Coast Titans. So that in itself uh, is really, really good. And then if you scroll across, we can see around 22 and 23, the last two starts, he scored a try in both of those games. Has also scored a try in 42% of matches this season. And on points bet, they're offering $1.90 for Terrell Sloan to cross for a try. So he's the one player I want to have in the Dragons Titans game. Looking through the rest of the options, uh, you could look at potentially the right edge for the Dragons, as that's where the majority of their tries come from the 10th ranked right edge compared to the 17th ranked left edge when you look solely at try scorers. However, most of those tries come through uh, Zach Lomax. He's very, very short for this game. I think he's only paying. Uh, if we bring it up here on a sports bet for Lomax, score a try, $1.47. Uh, for me to back him, I think it's an okay opportunity uh, if we get a better price. However, the Titans do defend that position well. And I feel like this is just a little bit of a tricky game. We don't know exactly how the Titans are going to come through last week's game against the Sharks, getting blown out 44-0. I think they'll, you know, they'll definitely be more intentful performance. However, with that season over now, um, not really an ideal you know, situation for them. So, you know, they could just drop all, but with Hazler coaching, I don't think that's going to be the case. And they do defend the position well. So it's not really an ideal situation for Lomax. Another one of those ones where, you know, I want $1.70 to $1.80 to be considering making it a bet. Um, so it's just going to be the one play there for the Dragons. On the Titan side, the best situation they realistically have because uh, the Titans don't really have that many positions where they are good and left wing is where they're the best. However, the Dragons are the second best defense to that position in the league. So once again, similar to when uh, the, the Titans played the Sharks last week, it was a poor situation for Carl Pereira, who is the Titans' leading try scorer. And, you know, it does cross for a very high number of tries, scored 20 overall on the season. But in back-to-back -back weeks now, he's had a poor matchup. And for him to score a try, he's paying $1.50 this week. Slightly better price than last week, um, but still a poor situation. So, um, once again, I'm just choosing to avoid that one, prefer the other selections uh, to that. For the Titans, you could look to target the second row. If we bring up their team lineup, uh, you have Fafita, Haas, and Randall. 
to uh, the starting second row. We will look through uh, Fine Diva for Fida, um, hasn't scored a try in his past seven games, averages trying 24% of matches. And then Haas playing in the second row has only scored one try since round 11. And then Randall scored a few tries during the mid part of the season, but hasn't scored in the past five. The issue you have kind of is there's no real second rower who, like obviously you're not expecting a second rower to score a try every week or anything by any means. However, I really kind of look for those ones that are scoring around the 33, 36%. Just kind of scoring a try once every three games or maybe in a really strong patch where they've scored you know, three tries across their past five games or even like beyond that, there's a player that has a really good record against that opposition, which when I went through uh, these players, none of them actually do. So it's another kind of thing where you know there's not enough factors that are contributing it to be a worthwhile bet. Could obviously play a... Uh, combination of the three of them or pick out two uh, probably you want to go with um, Fafida and Haas to cross as the most likely but you could you know pick out two or three and combine them for one play to cross but um, the odds are just not probably going to be great enough to make it worthwhile so spoken enough about that game for just the singular play uh, final game of the round Sharks versus Knights for this matchup if we look at the Sharks firstly the Knights defend the right side very well, but they don't defend the left side very well. So the Sharks need to target the left side, particularly left wing. Playing left wing with Ronaldo Militalo out, we have um, Sam Stone Street, who has been filling in this position and filling it in pretty well. He scored two tries last week against the Titans, scored in his uh, other match in round 22, and then did score back in round seven when he played earlier this season. So has scored a try in 100% of games Obviously, a small sample size, only playing the three games on the season, uh, but has scored four tries overall against this nice side where I'm expecting the Sharks attack to uh, heavily push towards that left edge. Happy to play him to score a try at $1.65 as my selection in this game. Feel like the Sharks, important game for them to win at home. They're going to push their attack towards that left edge where the Knights are weaker, and that's where the tries are going to come from. When you're looking at this, you'll notice uh, the halves for the Sharks, number one in the league, and Knights ranked 13th defensively. However, Sharks are playing back up half and 5'8 for this game. So I definitely just avoid that. Obviously, it's not saying they won't cross because it is a good matchup for them. However, Atkinson and Braley are the regular halves for the Sharks. So it's not, you know, those tries haven't been coming from them. For the Knights, uh, left center is pretty much the only position you could consider targeting, but personally, I'm just going to stay away from it. Uh, the nice attack is just a little bit inconsistent. The Sharks defense is very, very strong, and I'd just rather have one play in this game, and that's on Stone Street. So those are the 12 plays. I'm going to recap them for you. Firstly, on Sportsbet, uh, the Tigers, Rabbitohs, we're going with Jai Gray, score a try at $2.20. Then on Ned, we can play these on Ladbrokes. In the Panthers Storm game, we have Grant Anderson to score at $2.35. In the Manly Seagulls, New Zealand Warriors, Saab, Hopawati, and Tommy Talao to combine for two plus tries. To find this, uh, we have actually have that game up on the screen, which is good. What you want to look for is the markets have two plus tries combined. You also have this section down here as well, um, if you don't see it there. But two plus tries combined and trios, click the drop down there. And then it's obviously near the top. Also, I really don't like how these sites lay this out because it's very difficult to find players. All you want to do is search to find them quickly. And especially if you're looking to compare, like to find certain players as you're scrolling through, just use your command F function and search for Saab, for example. And then you can go through and easily see where Saab is listed and compare that Two, uh, you could also fully write out the three players that you're looking for. However, it's not going to show up in the right order. Um, that's just a little quick trick just to easily find those players. Then the uh, final play there with, oh, sorry, I scrolled all the way down. Uh, we have three more with Ned's or Labrokes. In the Roosters Eels game, Daniel Tupo and Dominic Young to score two plus tries combined so that the duo's market, $1.64. Cowboys-Raiders game, Valentine Holmes to score at $2.25. 
And also in that matchup, Xavier Savage for the Raiders to score at $1.94. On to TAB in the Manly Seagulls New Zealand Warriors game. Tom Trebojevic to score a try at $1.60. Then in the Roosters Eels game, Joseph Swahiliki to score at $2.40. Rabbitohs Tigers game, Cody Walker to score a try at $2.75. And in the Sharks Knights game, Sam Stone Street to score a try at $1.65. Then over on points bet, Brian Taho to score a try at $1.80 for the Panthers. And Dragons Titans, Terrell Sloan to score a try at $1.90. Those are the 12 bets. So those are the 12 bets. You're following along, good luck. And the important thing to know is, you know, you're not picking these selections just based on randomness or because that player scored a try last week or, you know, you just have a gut feeling they're going to score a try. You're making these decisions based on the statistics and analytics of how these teams have performed this season. And, you know, we're at round 24. We're deep into the season. We have a lot of data on how these teams have been performing, not just from a try score perspective, um, but also from a general play perspective where their what their attack is, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, also in defense. And we can compare this. And that's why everything I share on this channel is based off actual data and information, basically the statistics on how teams perform to allow us to make smart betting decisions. Because if you can do this, then you can be profitable. And when you're betting on the NRL each week, you can actually be making money from doing it. Because obviously it's fun to bet, watch the football, but also it's a lot more fun when you actually are making money off it. And that's not about, you know, you have to win every bet and get emotional and stressed out about it. But over the long term, you'll know, looking back on the season, that majority of the weeks over the season, I was profitable. And at the end of the season, this is how much money I made. You approach it from that perspective, then, you know, every season you can be a winning better. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, something you're trying to do for fun, but then becomes a painful experience because you're losing money. So hopefully that's what I'm helping convey to you guys through these videos and giving you the strategies to be able to do that. If you want to use these tools for yourself, obviously I try to get this video up as soon as I can. The lineups come out on Tuesday night and then I record it on uh, late Wednesday afternoon because obviously I have to go through and research and pick the plays and everything. But if you want to use these for yourselves, you have access to all this information with the NRL bet finders and I'll put the link in the description so you can use them. So all this information is there, all the rankings, etc. You can use that 24 seven on your computer or on your mobile phone. You can use that. And then when the lineups come out on Tuesday afternoon, I upload them into the system. That populates everything you need to know for the try scorer matchups, which you're looking at here. It also, uh, when I put the lineups in, it also, one of the new tools I've been using this season is the key players. So you're able to go through, once I plug in the lineups, you're able to see, is there any key players in or out for certain teams based off, you know, their key performance indicators looking at try assist tries this can also help with your try score markets if there's a team like for example with the eels right here you'll notice that most of their tries this year have come through Tulagi and Sivo uh, with Sivo out for this game uh, kind of the onus falls a little bit on Tulagi to you know score those tries which um, you can use when you're deciding on which try scorers you want to make so um, these are just some of the different tools that you use um, for your betting on try scorers, et cetera. Um, but all the tools that I use and have used for the past 12 years, I include with the bet finder. So definitely uh, check those out, start using them to win. And the reason why I say that is because you don't need to wait for the videos in order to start doing your research and finding bets. With that being said, hope you guys have a great weekend, make some money and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos coming up over the next few weeks as we head towards finals. Thanks guys for watching and I'll talk to you soon.